Hey Stampers! I'm just hopping on live. <clears throat> I'm gonna find my post in my page. Oh goodness, I feel like I'm like really super close to the camera. It feels like it's like right up my nose, so sorry about that. Um, I'm gonna find my post so I can see who is coming on. so that I can see your comments and your likes and all the love that I know you're gonna send me as I make these projects. Let's see here. Okay. I think I'm in. I got a new computer this weekend, so I'm still kind of trying to figure out how this all works. I got one of those uh, two-in-one HP laptop computers that you can kind of flip open like a tent or flip all the way open like a tablet and you can write on it. And um, so I've got it set up as a tent, but uh, this is all very new to me. And I had a little bit of a panic attack earlier tonight because as I was getting ready uh, to go live and kind of set up my station here to make sure that when I'm stamping, I don't stamp off of my workspace and you can see what I'm doing. I have a test page where I go and check that out and I was trying to connect and go live um, but my internet was out and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the first time I'm going live in quite a while because I finally found some uh, balance in my uh, work and stamping life. And wouldn't you know, my internet was out. So I was having a little miniature panic attack, but everything is good to go now. Um, as you're hopping on, I would love it if you would say hello and let me know that you're here. Um, I do not like talking to myself, which you would never guess since I do these lives. And I have to be honest with you, this live is me sitting in my craft room talking to myself. <laughs> Hi, Leslie. Welcome. Thanks for watching. Um, so the more uh, comments that you have, and especially if you have questions, I want to be able to help you. So... One of my goals um, through these uh, stamping live events is really to help a lot of you beginner stampers. Uh, as you have questions, I really want you to ask them. I have three projects that I'm going to show you tonight. One I copied from the celebration flyer and two of them are really simple stamping projects. So we're talking just stamps ink, paper, and one of them uses a punch. And I wanted to do that because sometimes I think that we stampers uh, really get into these really intricate um, detailed cards and we don't always have time. I am the first person to say, because my job is super demanding, I don't always have time to come up to my craft room and make uh, a card that takes me 20 minutes or even a half hour. Sometimes I just need a quick card. So I really want to focus each of my lives on giving you some of those quick, simple cards because I know we all have things to do, right? Hi, Kathy. Hi, Charlene. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm really excited to be back live, Kathy. I'm so glad that uh, you're happy to see me back. Um, so of course, since I haven't been live in a while, I'm a little bit nervous, and uh, who wouldn't be with a camera right in their face, right? So I came up, well, I didn't come up with these, but I found some jokes that I think might help break the ice, and who doesn't like to start off with a good joke? So the first one, hi, Julie. Uh, the first joke that I have to get you all uh, excited to stamp and break the ice here for all of you. Uh, watching is what is a fish's favorite TV show? If you've heard it, 
put it in the comments, but I'm not going to wait too long because the punchline isn't that great. Uh, Gilmore Girls. Isn't that funny? Gilmore Girls? I have to give Jimmy Kimmel credit for that one. And the other one that he... Um, hi, Kathy. The other joke that I had Jimmy Kimmel tell me through my Alexa app was, who is a rabbit's favorite actor? Dennis Hopper. I know, they're horrible dad jokes, but hey, they work. Um, okay, I'm going to get started stamping shortly, but first I want to show you a valentine that I made with this really, I don't remember the name of it, it's the pig one, this little piggy. This stamp set here. Um, hey, Kathy, I'm glad I got a laugh out of somebody. They're really horrible dad jokes, right? But Okay, so I turned my This Little Piggy stamp set into a valentine that I'm probably going to send to my niece. So uh, she's two. Hi, sea bass. Uh, she's two, so I think she'll think that this pig with all the kisses on it is really cute. And if my sister ends up watching this, sorry that I ruined the surprise. Um, okay. I don't want to chat forever and, uh, keep you guys waiting for projects. So I'm going to get started right away here. I'm going to flip you around. Um, if any of this makes you motion sickness, then thank you, Leslie. I appreciate that. Uh, maybe close your eyes until I get everything all switched around here. So, oh, if I can figure this out. Okay, here we go. I want to make sure that this is centered. If the lighting is bad, somebody please say so in the comments. I was really playing around with my light because I had a really horrible shadow over here. Um, but when I have it off, it's really dark. So uh, don't hesitate to mention if the lighting is bad and I'll see what I can do to fix it. <coughs> um... Also, bear with me because I am getting over a cold, so hopefully all this talking, um, I won't lose my voice. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to jot down my website because when I'm done, I am going to post the replay of this video on my YouTube and my blog. And I'm going to have links to all the products if there's something that you liked. And remember, I have my Rustic Rewards program. This is the loyalty program I developed for my awesome customers where you can kind of, instead of having to order a whole bunch um, at once to get Hostess Rewards, I'm letting you... Um, kind of tally all those orders up so that you can get some free stuff. You have to use my host code to be part of Rustic Rewards if your order is less than $150. So I'm going to jot my host code down here for this month. And on my blog at countrycardsbyrose.com, you will see a tab across the top that says Rustic Rewards, and that's where you will get your tracking sheet. The other thing is I'm going to be giving away some prizes at my next live, which will be next week, same time, same place. And um, anyone who orders from me will be entered for a prize. Anyone who shares my video and anyone who comments. So, this is how you can win. I'm going to set this up here so you can all remember it. And then get this out of the way. Okay. So, when I was preparing my projects for tonight, I have to tell you I had some creative block. And when that happens... I like to just find a project that I love 
and make it. And it seems that that kind of gets my creative juices flowing. So the first project I'm going to make for you is that card that I copied from the catalog. I'm going to use the Home to Roost stamp set. Um, this is free, by the way. Celebration is going on right now through the end of March. This is free with a $50 purchase. So you get this free with a $50 purchase and you get to tally up your rustic rewards for a free stamp set later. So that's a pretty good deal. Uh, I fell in love with this card right here. And so that's what we're going to make. Um, okay, I've got all my layers here. We've got a card base. This is Tranquil Tide. And this is just a standard card base that I cut at uh, five and a half. Sorry, it is, I always get so confused. It's five and a half this way. And then it's uh, eight and a half this way. And then you fold it at four and a quarter. Okay, so that's our card base. Um, I've got another layer of Tranquil Tide that, see, I was smart and I wrote these dimensions down. That was, it's five by three and three quarters. And in our card from the catalog, they used this new um, embossing folder that was in the, um, the autumn catalog that we had the holiday catalog and they carried it over into the new catalog but I don't think you can get it right now and so plus I like to change things up a little bit so I'm going to use the wood grain or the wood planks embossing folder and we're just going to emboss this layer of Tranquil Tide so let me bring in my big shot here now, just a reminder for some of you newbie beginner stampers, this embossing folder is one of those really thick textured embossing folders, and you don't need as many layers when you run it through your Big Shot. So you're gonna wanna use your standard platform and only one cutting plate. So I'm just gonna line this up here with one of the straight lines from the wood planks so we don't have it uh, too crookedy. And all we do is run that through. And again, another reminder, when you run these through the Big Shot, you always wanna put the folded edge going forward. Otherwise, what happens is you put a lot of pressure on it. If you're, if you're going through the other way, you're putting too much pressure on this crease and it can snap and break your embossing folder. And none of us wants that to happen. So here we have my really pretty embossed layer. And this, I'm gonna glue right down to my card base. I'm using liquid glue for this because we've got a lot of texture here in this embossed piece. And I find the liquid glue is really the best adhesive for sticking that stuff down. So I'm gonna center this. Try to get it before the glue dries here. Okay. Okay, so we've got that set. Now, the card in the catalog also uses a piece from the, um, let's see, I'm going to get you, so you can see this. This is from the Wood Textures Designer Series Paper. This is my favorite Designer Series Paper. I have like three or four partial packs here. Um, it's all these really, really pretty different wood grains, double-sided, six by six. It's a staple in my craft room. Um, so we're using this kind of whitewash looking one. Both sides is really whitewashed. This layer is four by two and three quarters. And I was looking closely here at the catalog 
and I noticed there was a little bit of color on that layer. So let's find this here. Um, I'm going to use some of our, these are our watercolor pencils to bring in some of that coloring detail that I noticed on this layer. And this is nothing fancy. We're just doing a little bit of scribbling with our blue. And then the same thing at the bottom, a little bit of scribbling with our yellow. And I really think what we're trying to do is make this kind of look like the horizon. If you uh, want, you can take one of your blender pens and soften up those colors just a little bit. I'm going to do that with my blue here. And then once you are using it with your color, all you have to do on your scrap is just kind of scribble to get that color out of there. And I'll do it a little bit with my yellow. Actually, I think we're still going to need this, so I'll leave this out. All right, I've got a scrap of Whisper White here that I'm going to use to stamp my rooster. I'm stamping in soft suede. Looks good. Cleaning off my stamp set over to the side here. <clears throat> and then I need more of my watercolor pencils to color in the rooster. So we're going to do quite a bit of blending on him. We've got some red and orange and yellow for the top of him. So I'm just going to come in and do a little bit of scribbling here. And we're going to bring some of the yellow here down. onto this part that's kind of naturally separated from the bottom part from his like his neck from his body and I'm going to carry some of that orange through here as well and now from his body I'll carry over some yellow and bring in some of the green and the catalog looks like it has a little bit of brown in it as well. Now his wing definitely has some brown and green going on. And listen, when I looked at this picture, I just picked apart the colors that I could find. And then his uh, tail, we've got some green going on for sure. And it looks like there was some Bermuda Bay because the combination of the two colors really made it look like our Tranquil Tide. And so I'm just bringing some of those in. Now, uh, right now our rooster doesn't look like much, right? He doesn't look, I have to tell you, he doesn't really look all that great. Bring some of this color down here but we're gonna make him look great, I promise. I'm looking for my green, here we go. And we're gonna do that with a blender pen. This is like magic. So, we're gonna start with his head. And I feel like I need a little bit more red here, so I'm gonna come back in with some red. And now I'm going to 
kind of blend these colors onto his neck. We're going to carry that color through down to his body. And I don't want to bring too much of the yellow in by his wings, so I'm kind of clearing all the color out of my blender pen. And now I start doing the blending on his wing. And next I'll do the tail. So you can see how these colors really mingle together with this blender pen. Um, let's see here. I feel like we need a little bit more of this teal tone in here. And so all you have to do is color and blend. It's really that simple. Okay. Get all that out of there. Um, I don't need my colored pencils anymore. So I'm just going to put these back here really quick so we can get them out of the way for the rest of our cards. Have any of you used blender pens with the um, watercolor pencils before? If you didn't know, this is great when you don't want to dig out your watercolor paper and uh, that watercolor marker for your projects. Okay, now we're gonna do some fussy cutting of our rooster. And this is really simple. Which, by the way, is why I didn't uh, care too much when I got a little bit out of the lines up here. I knew we would be cutting them out. Uh, for those of you who don't do fussy cutting, I'm telling you, I thought there is no way in heck I was ever going to be a fussy cutter. And um, I started doing it. I find it to be a little bit therapeutic, like uh, coloring is to a lot of people. And so now I really don't mind it at all. And it's a great way to get... Um, oops. One of my scraps here landed on my stamp pad. It's a great way to get some of these images that don't have coordinating dies uh, to pop up and add some dimension to those projects. And really, I promise you, it doesn't take that long, especially with these amazing paper snips. Oh my gosh, with this really pointy end, which I'm going to show you in a second how awesome this is, you can pretty much get into any nook and cranny with these things. Okay. So like around my beak here, I don't want all this white because the tip of this is so precise, you know, I can just go in there and snip it away. Super easy. All right, time for a little bit more stamping here. I'm going to come in with this, uh, I don't know if this is wheat or what this is, some sort of farmy type grass. And stamp those on our sheet that we lightly colored. Sometimes it is we got one more thing to stamp. All the details that make a difference. Okay, so now we just have to glue this down. And I've got a scrap of 
sorry, I always forget this color, soft suede here. This piece is two and a quarter by three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to take this sentiment here that says, uh, thanks for your friendship. And then I'm just going to stamp in the center here. And then we want our rooster behind our little scrap. So I'm just going to glue this down here. And then I've got a little bit of this braided linen trim. Um, really any uh, like your baker's twine would probably work for this. Your, oh, you know what would work even better? I think I'm going to change this up. Hang on. I just had an idea. This stuff would work awesome. This is going to be even prettier. This is our copper trim. And I'm just cutting a little scrap of this. And then remember, nobody's seeing the back of this. So I'm just going to use a little bit of tape to tape this down. And then I'm going to fray the edges of this to give it more of a kind of rustic country look. I'm gonna close this before I drop my really pretty cut piece into it. Has that happened to anyone? Because I have ruined many beautiful project pieces by dropping it into my ink pad. Okay, pop this piece up on some dimensionals. And we'll do one more. Okay, we're gonna line this up. There we go. Isn't that pretty? I love this card. Now this is our outside, our piece with our different embossing folder. And just for comparison, here's the one I was using for my inspiration in the catalog. The colors are a bit different. If you wanted to darken it up, you could certainly do that. My model card has a little bit darker colors. I brought a little bit more of that orange in and I used that other uh, embossing piece, or sorry, embossing folder. So we have a little bit of a different textured background. So that kind of gives you an idea. I also use the, the linen. Um, trim. Now, I like to stamp the inside of my cards and this really, really dark card is going to be hard for anyone to write on. I feel like this would be a really great kind of all occasion card that I could use for a birthday or maybe just a, a little note that I would send to a friend. Let me get some stuff out of the way here so I can get this done. So I want to do a little decorating on the inside. I'm going to stamp some of our, I don't know, what is that? Country grass, wheat, oats, whatever it is. And then I'm coming in with some So Saffron here just to bring a little brighter color into the mix. Give it that really rustic country look. 
And then I'm just going to glue this down into the inside of the card. Yes, Kathy, I'm nervous if I leave my ink pads open too long, they'll dry out too. They never have on me, but it doesn't stop us stampers from getting that anxiety over our uh, stuff being open, right? I mean, we want to take really good care of our crafting supplies. All right. Now I've got a beautiful inside to the card as well. On my model card, I also added a rooster here and I used that sentiment just a note. I thought that made this look like stationary a little bit. So there's an idea for you. And of course, when we send it in the mail, we are gonna wanna do something fun with our envelope. So don't forget that, we love to stamp, remember? So just peeking out of the corner here, I'm gonna stamp that rooster. And now we've got an envelope that coordinates with our card. So what do you think of our first project? Simple, huh? We just copied a project that we loved from the catalog. It got me over my creative block so that I could get some uh, cool projects going for you guys for tonight. And so uh, I guess that's one of my tips for some of you uh, stampers who tell me, hey, when I go home, I have a really hard time creating. Open up your catalog and use it for inspiration. The cards in there are gorgeous. And usually it kind of gets your brain going a little bit. So here we go again, our two cards. All right, let's do a little cleanup of our area here for our next card. Yes, Kathy, you are right. That could very easily be a man card. A lot of stampers have a hard time coming up with man cards. So, um, that is a perfect option. I know it'd be a good one for my husband and my mother-in-law. She loves chickens. My aunt also uh, raises chickens for eggs, and so um, that would be a great card for her. Okay. <coughs> Hang on, I got the coughs coming. I warned you guys, I got to get some water here. Hi, Sarah, thank you so much. That's so nice of you to say. I'm really happy to be back online. All right. I am going to be using my one of my very, very favorite stamp sets for this next card, Foxy Friends. This stamp set is adorable. You can build anything with it. As soon as I saw it, when I first became a demonstrator, this was the first stamp set I was really drawn to in the catalog. You can build anything. You can build a cat. You can build, they have little antlers in here to build a little deer, a little raccoon, which is what we're going to be doing today, a fox. And this is just a super, super versatile set. This may not be something that you typically think of for Valentine's Day, but we're going to make a really, really easy Valentine with it. Okay. Now... These are photopolymer stamp sets, and when you're using photopolymer stamps, you're always gonna want something with a little bit of cushion underneath your project. So you see me kind of bring out these um, mats, and these are called Stamp and Pierce mats by Stampin' Up. I cover mine with a piece of this grid paper so it can help me kind of line up my projects as I'm stamping. And this will help you to get 
a nice crisp image when you are stamping your sentiment or your pictures, whatever it is that you are working with. Okay, I'm just gonna move a little bit of stuff here out of the way so we can get going. All right, for this card, we're using Smoky Slate. That's my card base, same dimensions as the last one. I'll post all the dimensions on my blog when I upload. And also um, in the description of this post, when I go to post it to Facebook, um, I'll make sure that I, if I can't figure it out, I'm sometimes technically challenged, that I edit it at least to include the dimensions for you so you have it right there. So we're gonna be using a Smoky Slate card base. Some real red. This layer is five by three and three quarters. And we're gonna have some Whisper White here, four and seven ace by three and five ace. These seem like weird dimensions. What I did was I went one eighth of an inch smaller than my real red layer. So when you're measuring it on your trimmer, just go to where you measured the real red, move it over an eighth of an inch, flip it and do the same thing. That's my little trick, uh, my little tip for you as you're cutting these layers. And I've done that because sometimes I just want a little tiny bit of that color peeking out to really make the card pop. Okay. This is one of our simple stamping cards. I need my smoky slate. And we're gonna use this, uh, I'm gonna call it a blank animal. It's really a solid image so that we can turn it to whatever animal we want. I'm turning this one into a raccoon. And so I want a lighter shade of my smoky slate and a darker shade of smoky slate. So we're gonna use a technique that's called stamping off. On my scratch paper here, I'll do it here so we get our image. I'm gonna stamp it one time. There's still some ink left on the stamp and then that's what I will stamp onto my card front here. And what we get is a lighter image of the ink color. So this is a great way to get some versatility from your ink pads. Now, I'm gonna come in and turn this guy into a raccoon. So, you're gonna see why I did the stamping off first. I've got the stripes of the raccoon tail and I've got this inked up I'm gonna really try to line this up without blocking the view here. We're gonna stamp this over the tail. Ooh, not too bad, I did pretty good. That's really exciting. And now you can see why I stamped off that first image because now the darker smoky slate shows up really great as the ringlets on this raccoon's tail. Next, our raccoon needs to have a mask, of course. So we're doing the same thing. I'm gonna line this up. Oh, you know what? No, we're not. I made a little bit of a boo-boo here. We aren't doing this yet. This is why I have my scrap piece. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot the best part of this card. I've got a piece of scrap whisper white here and I'm going to stamp the raccoon face on here. So I stamped off for the face and now I'm going to come in with the mask. When you see what I'm going to do with this, you're going to be Super excited. 
So hopefully my head isn't in the way here. I'm trying to line this up. Ooh, pretty good. Okay, I've got the mask. I'm running out of my small blocks. So I'm gonna have to unmount this one for the face. And then we're gonna bring in our eyes and nose. And these I'm going to stamp in my black memento ink. Line these up. Cute. Now here's the part that I think is super cute. This stamp set coordinates with the Fox Builder Punch. And so what I'm going to do is pop out the raccoon's cute little face. I'm going to line it up here. Can you see how I'm lining it up with the punch? Okay, and now I'm going to punch this out. We're going to be using this, but first, because it's going to be hard to do this, once I get this face on here, I'm going to stamp the part of my card that makes this a little valentines -y. In the stamp set is this cute conversation bubble with these hearts. And I'm just going to stamp that up here. And now with this little face I stamped, I punched out. I'm going to pop that up on a dimensional. And I'm going to put it right over the top of our little raccoon's face on our card front to give that a little bit of dimension. Isn't that adorable? Sometimes I can't believe I come up with these ideas. Okay. So now, I'm going to be doing a little bit more stamping here. We, I wanted the sentiment on the front to make it a little more obvious that this was a Valentine's card. I'm using Real Red for this, by the way. So I took the sentiment from the next stamp set. I cannot remember the name. It's the really adorable one in the Occasions catalog that has like the otter and the alligator and the ape in it. So I'm going to line up the sentiment. It says, hey, Valentine. And now we're going to put our card together. So get our glue here. Get this mounted on our red layer. We get our little bit of red peeking out, which really makes this red pop. <clears throat> and I always like a little bit of a ribbon embellishment. So a lot of stampers who um, have home parties or come to my classes or uh, clubs always uh, kind of laugh at how much I like to use ribbon on cards. And so I'm going to put some white uh, right here at the bottom. 
I'm going to use a faux bow technique that I was playing around with this weekend. So um, I have this bottle of Stampin' Mist from my Stampin' Scrub. And what I've been doing, because it's a little bit easier um, to tie these bows when I've, I'm not using it on paper that's like super bendy, I go in here and I tie a knot here and then what you can do is on this loop I can cut that And then I can wrap that around my card and tape it down. So I'm going to trim off the ends of this here. Get this stuff out of my way. And then place this on my card front. Just flip it over, and then all I have to do um, is tape these ends of this ribbon down. Okay, I can pop this up on dimensionals again here. Center this, and we got our card. Oh, I didn't quite get this centered. Of course, when you're live, you don't center the card very good. There we go. And now we've got our adorable Valentine's card. You notice I smudged this a little bit. I just noticed I must have run my finger across it. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Sarah. Um, here's one that's not smudged. I had a hard time lining up the tail on that one. But you can see one that doesn't have all those smudge lines there. I added a few of these white epoxy droplets. How do you like that? I feel like it really adds something to the card. And we've got these pretty um, rhinestones. I could add some of those. That would be pretty. Or do you think the white's better? Let's try the rhinestones. I always like to add these in odd numbers. There, now we got a little bling on the card, huh? Cute. Okay, simple stamping, it doesn't really get any easier than that. We've got a little bit of a punch to give some dimension, but other than that, it's just some stamps, ink, paper, and a little bit of ribbon. Um, okay, let me do my clean up again. Make some room for my next project. you're really gonna like this one actually I think you're gonna like the coordinating projects that I have to go with this one we're gonna be using some of our uh, stamping blends let's see here I want to get my ink pads out of the way so I don't smudge anything
Okay. My last project tonight. Uh, Charlene, your question, what catalog is the stamp set and the punch in? The Foxy one, that's in the big catalog. And if you, I don't know if a lot of you know this, but if you go back to the back of the card or the back of the catalog, it lists the stamp sets alphabetically. So this one is called Foxy Friends. It tells you what page it's on. Page 86. And I like to do that because um, I go here and then I get some ideas of what they're kind of doing with the stamp sets. So here they use the punch for a little cat, I think this is, um, in the catalog. And then here they've got the fox. So you can kind of see how the Stampin' Up! artists are using these stamp sets and get some of those ideas. And if you don't know, whenever a stamp set coordinates with a punch, um, it's colored in this kind of, I don't, like a yellowish color. And it says on the bottom here, coordinates with Fox Builder Punch. When it coordinates with a die, it's outlined in this light bluish gray. So that's in the big catalog, Charlene. And then the punch, this is not a bundle anymore. It used to come in, in um, a bundle, but it's not anymore. The punch, it tells you what page that's on um, when you're here. That's on page 212. And you get all these pieces. So you've got, like, here's the punch. You got the head, the body, the tail, this little tuft of hair that can go on here. Um, the face. And then I think a nose comes out and a couple ear pieces and a little piece for the tail. So, super easy, really fun. All right. My next project, another simple stamping project. We are only using stamp, ink, paper, and some ribbon. I'm using the Hey Love stamp set. This is the stamp set where I got that Hey Valentine sentiment that I used on the last card. Thank you, Kathy, for the commentary about the color combination. I love Smoky Slate Red and White on the last one, too. I think it's gorgeous. Um, so this is the stamp set I was drawn to. I must have a thing for cutesy little animals. When I opened the occasions catalog and I saw this, this is stinking adorable. Seriously. We've got a skunk that, uh, I don't know, alligator, crocodile, whatever it is, that ape, this little otter, um, this bird. As I was playing around to come up with something, I colored in this bird and kind of punched it out in a circle punch. I used my blender pens or my blender markers on it. So here's an example of something you can do with this little bird. I think he turned out super cute, um, but I haven't figured out. Hi Robin, hi Frank, glad you could join me. I haven't figured out what I wanna do with this. So when I have stuff that I wanna use in cards, I have this cute little um, plate that my sister got me when she was in Peru. And uh, I just set it there and I kind of think it over and eventually I'll have a project that comes to me. But anyway, here's the stamp set we're using. We are going to use some of our ribbon that is also in the celebration catalog. So this ribbon comes in a four pack. It is free with a $50 purchase. Um, let me see what these colors are. I can never remember. Balmy Blue, Daffodil Delight, Grapefruit Grove, Highland Heather, and Lemon Lime Twist. There's five spools, and there's five yards of each color in here. Again, that's free with a $50 purchase, just like our rooster stamp set. Okay. We're going to use the Balmy Blue on our card and 
I should have been a little bit more prepared because I just noticed I never even opened this yet. Okay, and we're going to be doing some coloring with our blender pens. Okay, this project uses one of our note cards. So um, in the catalog, you can buy sets of note cards and envelopes. So the note cards, once you fold it in half, end up being three and a half inches by five inches. They come already scored. You just fold and burnish. And they come with the matching envelopes already with them. Like you cannot get any simpler than this. If you are beginning stamping, I highly recommend you get some note cards and envelopes. It's just simple. And then all you have to do is get some coordinating colors if you want to do layers of cardstock. Otherwise, you can just stamp right on here. Or like what I'm doing, I'm going to be stamping on a layer of Whisper White that we're going to be putting on here. Our Whisper White layer <coughs> is four and three quarters by three and a quarter. Since we're using our blender pens, you have to stamp your image in Memento ink. Uh, because these are alcohol markers, you don't want to be using the stays on. It will bleed. But the Memento ink does not bleed. So, I'm going to stamp this super adorable otter. I need to re-ink my memento pad. I'm trying to make sure that when I stamp him, I don't have any bald spots. Of course, if I was using the Stamparatus, it wouldn't be a big deal, but I didn't get that all prepped for tonight, so. All right, we're gonna stamp our otter. Cute! Isn't he cute? Oh my god, I love him. He's so cute. Okay. Um, and then we're going to stamp this adorable saying, You Otter Be My Valentine. You seriously cannot get any cuter than that. Okay, and I'm just going to stamp that right next to my otter. Easy. And now, for those of us who like our therapeutic coloring, creative therapy here. We're going to come in with our blender pens. I'm using light and dark crumb cake for our otter. I'm going to do light on his belly. And I'm going to show you a little trick here with these uh, blender pens. Well, Stamp and blends, I guess, is officially what they're called. I'm going to show you a little trick that you may not know. To blend your colors, you need your ink to be wet. And the really cool thing about stamp and blends is that because the markers are alcohol and dry so fast, you don't necessarily need a second color to bring in some blending and different shading. So if I wanna do a little bit of different shading, once this first layer is dry, I can just come back in and color again with the same color and you get a little slightly different tone. It's probably really hard for you to see um, on the video. I hope that you can see it because it's really small details like this that seriously make us look like professional colors. 
like we are real time artists here. I forgot to color in his uh, face. Every time I color with these blender pens, I seriously feel like a million bucks because I walk away like, I can't believe I just colored that. That's really good. And the blender pens just seriously make it really simple. And I love that Stampin' Up! is kind of expanding the color line of these markers. A couple things. One, I have new ones to choose from that coordinate with the different stamp sets I love and the colors I like to use with them. And two, because when I'm trying to buy all these goodies on a budget and they release them at different times, I can purchase them little by little. So because I'm coloring some pretty intricate areas here. I'm using the fine tip. I'm really trying to be careful to not go outside the lines. I'm like one of those people who colors with their tongue out. <laughs> okay, and now we're gonna go in here. And again, back to my little tip, if you want a little bit darker shading, once your color is dry, just go back in here and bring in a second layer. And you've got some shading going on there. Okay. I'm going to color in my heart here with my dark, flirty flamingo. I think that this adds a really nice, bright pop of pink color to this otter. I don't know if you can see the shading here. And then, again, I like a little shading with my blenders so just that extra detail going in there and now I've got my light balmy blue and I feel like he's in the water here so for all these little water areas I'm just gonna outline them And then to give him some dimension, I'm going to take the light balmy blue and I'm going to outline around my otter. Again, these are just really small details. They don't take a long time, but they really make your card pop. Um, one trick I like to do, I guess I'll call it a tip, not a trick, is you're going to see why I'm using balmy blue here, but if I wasn't going to use the blue, what I like to outline with is the light soft sea foam, and it just kind of gives it more dimension, and so your colored image really pops off the page. All right, now here's the reason behind my balmy blue. I want to come in with my new ribbon and let's use my trick because I really loved how that bow turned out. Cutting up the center of our loop and what we cut in the center of our loop is what we're going to secure to our card and then we just have to kind of cut off the 
other ends. Okay. Now I'm going to secure my ribbon to my card. Use my tape, no one's going to see this. My best friend, as I'm working with ribbon, taping it to the back of the card. And then I am just going to pop this up on dimensionals onto our card base. And we're just about done. Isn't this super adorable? Uh, I feel like I left my tags on my ribbon a little too long here, so I'm just going to come in and trim those. Isn't that cute? Oh my gosh, this is so easy. We stamped him, we colored him in, we added a few details with our balmy blue around him, and we're done. You seriously cannot get any easier than this. If you wanted, you could stamp another sentiment on the inside of your card, or you can leave it blank uh, to hand write in. And... I'm going to show you that I also made this card with the Grapefruit Grove ribbon, which I think ended up looking a little pink. I used my yellow. I stamped that little bird and that cute little gopher thing. I don't know what he is, but he's cute. Here's another one where... Um, I gave you that tip about outlining in the light soft sea foam. I did that here and I think it gives these um, little critters some dimension. I did our pretty gator here and used our lemon lime twist. I used light and dark granny apple green for her. And then of course I did the ape in Highland Heather uh, ribbon here. And so I use the coordinating light and darks on this heart for our ape. Aren't these adorable? Oh my gosh. So now I've got a set of Valentines that I can easily pop in the mail. If you have kids, they will have so much fun making these uh, to give to their friends. Sherry, is that a hamster? I think you're right. This does look like a hamster. I called it a little gopher thing. And hamster is probably the right word, especially considering he's about the size of our little bird. And again, for some more color combination ideas, here's that little blue bird that I colored in that I originally wanted to use with our blue ribbon, but I couldn't figure out a way to make it look very good. So I'm setting it aside until I have another project. Yes, I love the pastel ribbon, Sherry. Thank you very much. I so appreciate all the love you guys are sending me. So here we go. We've got our adorable set of cards using our Hey Love stamp set. We got our Valentine with our Fox. Adorable. Here's our with our white epoxy and here's with our bling. Cute. And then we kicked it off here with some inspiration from the Celebration Catalog. We got our rooster. 
And we've got a few tones of them because that's what happens when you do blenders. You can do really whatever you want. So here's all of our projects, all of our ideas. I really, really hope that I inspired you tonight. I'm going to move some of this out of the way so you can be reminded here. I will post the replay of this on my blog, countrycardsbyrose.com. I will have all the dimensions of these cards for you because all my post-its are here and you can't see them anymore. Remember, I have my Rustic Rewards program. So we've got celebration going on now. There is tons of free stuff for a $50 purchase and you get a bigger bonus because you can collect those Rustic Rewards and turn them in for a free stamp set. Um, it's a great way to get some free stamp sets when you're ordering on a budget. Remember, you can win prizes if you order, if you share, and if you comment. So I would love to inspire more and more people and I need your help to share my video in order to do that. So I really appreciate you guys stopping by and checking out my video. Um, I love all the love that you showed me and all of your wonderful friendly comments. Thank you. I will be stamping live again next Wednesday night at 7.30. If there is anything you want to see, any techniques or stamp sets you'd like me to feature, I can't promise anything because I don't have all the goodies from the Occasions catalog, but give it a shot. Send me a message and let me know what is something you'd like to see. Again, I'm really trying to focus on some of the simple stamping so that um, these projects are not so daunting. Thanks again for stopping by, ladies. I really hope you have a great rest of your night. Uh, at least we don't have freezing rain here, so um, thanks so much. Bye-bye.